Okay, it's at three o'clock on my computer screen. Uh, welcome everybody to Alberta Paul Scorer's annual general meeting. My name is Leanne Fishbook. I'm the executive director. And I'm going to take a few minutes of your time right, right off the hop here to provide an overview to the format of this meeting today. If I could have the next slide, please. Excellent. So if you were an eligible producer, we had asked that you had pre-registered with us earlier this month. And to allow that uh, to happen, we wanted to check to make sure you were on our voting list. So thank you very much to all the producers who were able to do that. Guests were able to register separately. For all participants in the meeting today, we are using the GoToWebinar function for our meeting content. And you have the ability to ask questions or comment in uh, the question function on the screen. So due to time constraints, we may not get to all of your questions, but if we don't, please feel free to contact us after the meeting and we'll get back to you then and have some answers for you. You will see an orange box with an arrow on your screen, which opens the availability to the questions function. And if during the meeting the box collapses on your screen, just press the orange uh, arrow again and the box will reappear. Everyone who is pre-registered has received the meeting package, which includes the agenda, minutes, and this year's annual report. You can also find them in the handout section of the meeting platform. So follow the orange box and the arrows and you'll see it in handouts. Today, eligible voters also receive notice from Election Buddy before the meeting. Election Buddy is our voting platform. Next slide, please. With the notice from Election Buddy, eligible voters uh, received a test question. So if you have not yet voted on Election Buddy with the test question, please do it now. The test question is, where does Pinto McBean live? Answers are A, Mundare, B, Westlock, C, Drumheller, D, Bow Island, or E, Belair. So we will wait a couple minutes and then I will share the results with you. As with all voting platforms, there will be a slight delay to have a calculation of the vote. APG will conclude the vote when there is over 50% of the eligible voters who have completed the majority of the response. For our meeting today, APG's quorum is 40. So we have uh, 40 producers and I'm just gonna wait and we will let you know where we're at in terms of voting. So, Please, if you're a producer and you've received the test question on Election Buddy, the platform, please go now and give it a try to do the voting. For all of our regional meetings this year, we use the election buddy platform for our voting process. So I appreciate the producers who attended during those times this fall and uh, got comfortable with the voting procedures that we have. So uh, for those of you that have not tried it yet, we hope you have um, good success with it during the day today. So we're just waiting a little bit longer to get some additional results. We actually have very good attendance for this particular meeting today. Um, our total attendees are in excess of 95 individuals. So this will include our producers as well as others who have joined as guests. So I will wait just a couple more minutes and then we'll get a total on the vote. And I, I know you're all waiting to learn who is uh, or where does Pinto McBean live. And I can assure you this is an actual photograph and this is an actual larger than life um, character that you can find in Alberta. So 
So for those producers, please try and, and submit your votes. We're just gonna wait a few minutes longer. This is a very unusual uh, year for annual general meetings and APG is holding the uh, last meeting of three this week. So thank you to all the producers who have showed up to all of those meetings. So we have the votes that are in and the tally is, where does Pinto McBean live? And we have 6.5% of the votes going to Mundare, zero votes going to Westlock, zero votes to Drumheller, Bow Island has 90.3% and Folaire has 3.2. Well, I'm pleased to say that those that had voted for Bow Island, you were successful. Pinto McBean lives in Bow Island and it is definitely an attraction that when everybody is ready to travel post pandemic, you'll be able to check out. So thank you very much for using the Election Buddy platform. For those producers who hadn't used it yet, please be aware that we will be asking you to vote later on in, in the, um, during the actual meeting. So for now, we have quorum. So I'd like to uh, transfer the meeting over to the chair of Alberta Pulse Growers, Mr. Don Shepard. There we go. Uh, my name is Don Shepard. I'm uh, chair of Alberta Pulse Growers coming you, to you today from the palatial studios of uh, APG in uh, Leduc, Alberta. Uh, I farm up in the St. Paul country, uh, second generation on, my, on our farm and uh, uh, been involved with APG and with pulses for a long time. And it's uh, been a very valuable relationship in my life and uh, really really appreciate the the things that have happened with APG and uh, and with pulses. Uh, at this point I'd like to call the meeting to order. Uh, I'd like to welcome you here today to our new 100% uh, virtual me meeting process that uh, is uh, what we're getting all used to uh, unfortunately and uh, I'd like to thank all those who have taken the time to uh, to, to get on their phones and to get on their computers and and uh, and visit with us today and and take in what is going on with APG. I'd like to acknowledge, acknowledge some of our guests today. Uh, I'd like to acknowledge that we have the uh, uh, several of our friends from Pulse Canada and uh, and our colleagues from other national organizations. Uh, uh, Grain Growers of Canada and Soya Canada. I'd like to thank uh, Manitoba's uh, Pulse and Soybeans and SAS Pulse Growers and uh, and Ontario for joining in with us today too. Uh, I'd like to thank our provincial crop commissions for joining us and uh, and also members of the Marketing Council and uh, also finally a thank you to all the stakeholders. Uh, the industry people who are who are sitting in and, and taking in the uh, actions that we have. Our provincial board is formed through uh, election of two directors from each of the five zones that we have across Alberta. Uh, we also have two directors at large positions that are elected and those positions are two years. The uh, other director positions are for three years. Uh, the elected farmer directors you'll see on the on the uh, screen now are uh, uh, just finishing up and at the end of this meeting we have another uh, organizational meeting to to talk about uh, our next year coming up. Uh, we're lucky that in this last year we didn't have any turnover and that uh, really helped in uh, in solidifying the way that we took things forward this year despite all of the challenges of uh, of COVID and 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 the working from home and we still managed to get together in ways that uh, I think largely benefited the pulse growing industry this year. Uh, 
This next slide shows all the advisors that contribute to our our uh, our success as as APG. These are farmers in each zone that come out to our our zone meetings and contribute to uh, to setting our policies and and our and the issues at hand. Uh, we were very lucky to have our typical March director advisor meeting in person just prior to the pandemic restrictions. It was one of the last times we were together learning and networking. These types of activities that bring together our advisors, directors and staff team really helped to build our organization. I am hopeful that at some point in 2021, we'll see these opportunities again. Next, we move on to see our, our staff and uh, the APG staff were a busy group of people in this last year. I appreciated their hard work and diligence in these challenging times. They pivoted easily to work under new restrictions and continued reaching out to farmers, colleagues, legislators, and key influencers through this whole year. These are the highly capable staff of your organization and they are all present on this virtual meeting today. Yes, thank you, staff. So now, so to move on to the, the business of the day, uh, we have our agenda in front of us. Uh, motion, we have uh, decided through the, uh, the process to, uh, to have movers and seconders so that we can uh, have the process go a little bit more uh, smoother today. Uh, the agenda is there. Uh, there's a motion to accept the APG agenda. Mover is Will Mueller. The seconder is Shane Stridors. Is there, uh, where are we? So we would, uh, we would, uh, is there any discussion? Is there anything to add to this? Okay, so if you have a comment, please put it in the chat and uh, the staff will, will, uh, will recognize it and, uh, and bring it forward to us. Uh, I think that's the best way to have it done. Uh, at this point in time, I think we'll call the question and you guys have tried to, uh, you guys have used election buddy already. So now you have to uh, refresh your platform and cast your vote to the motion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mentioned. So while you vote, uh, the staff will tabulate the votes and will let Leanne know what they're at and we can then go on to our, our next bit of business. Don, you're on mute. Can you unmute yourself? So hi, everybody. It's Leanne. I just wanted to let you all know that that um, the motion to accept the agenda has passed. Thank you, Leanne, and thank you, everybody. Everyone has a copy of the minutes in their package. Uh, please review them. Please let us know in the question chat function. Uh, the motion to approve the minutes for from the H APG AGM January 29, 2020. The mover is Allison Amateur. The seconder is Caroline Sekaluk. Is there any discussion?
So again, this is Leanne. If you have any discussion or comments related to the minutes, please insert them into the uh, the questions portion of your uh, platform. Okay, so at this point, I'll uh, call for the vote. Uh, please refresh your platform and cast your vote on the motion. So while everybody is voting on these minutes, this is Leanne again, I'd just like to share that we chose Election Buddy to help us and we didn't know whether or not we were going to have voting for um, positions with our organization. And so we opted to use this additional platform to calculate out all of the, um, all of the votes so that we could do it quite easily. So we've just been informed, Don, that the minutes have passed. Okay, thank you, Leanne. Uh, we can move on. We're on slide 10, the APG reports and the highlights of uh, 2019, 20 video. Just, uh, I'd like to uh, move, okay, we, we moved on to the reports. We'll start this section with the APG video. Uh, and think about Harvest 2019. It will be like
Don, hit the unmute button. There we go. Thank you. Uh, it was fun making those reports and uh, I, and very uh, a, a lot to offer. And uh, you'll be seeing the pulses on every farm, on every plate often enough from us. And uh, I think it's a good challenge to, to put out there. Uh, my report is on page two of the, uh, of the annual report. Uh, I just wanted to add a couple little things to, 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 to show that, well, not to show. It, you know, there's exciting news in the pulse industry in Alberta. Uh, we are starting to see the development of processing. Uh, uh, there's things happening in the Airdrie area. Uh, we're seeing Legal with some development. Uh, these things are moving ahead. And it's, it's, it, it's been taking time, but it's finally, we're at the point where some of these things are, are actually becoming, uh, it, it going into production. Uh, despite the year of not getting together, we still managed to accomplish a lot as a board and, and as board with staff. Uh, despite the fact you're not together, still the Zoom meetings did manage to get us uh, into places where we were able to address issues that were really important to everybody. Uh, board and staff worked hard to go through the changes and the challenges of the pandemic. Um, Harvest was good, uh, but not for everybody. Uh, we, 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 we live in such a diverse province that it's so hard to, uh, it's so hard to, it's, it's nice to see people have their, 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 uh, their, their good results. And yet we do see areas that this year had flooded out results. Uh, in our board meeting yesterday, when we were talking about our, uh, about our areas, Three of the areas really saw hard, hard uh, result, not good results from a phantom ices. And there it's, a, it's a real concern for those of us who have seen too much water. So uh, with that, uh, I think uh, we, uh, we, we've really seen a good year come and, and go. And uh, I just, again, wanna thank the board for doing a, a good job of keeping things going. I'd like to invite the chair of the Audit and Finance Committee, Zone Director Jerome Isaac, to present the financial report. Jerome, it's yours. All right, I think I got my audio on now. There you go. <laughs> there we go. Thanks, Don. So on behalf of the board, I'm presenting the 2019 to 2020 financial statements. Over the course of the last few years, sitting on the Audit and Finance Committee, uh, I continue to be impressed with APG's financial standing. Our full commitment to long-term long projects uh, through our reserves and our ability to budget well year over year despite revenue fluctuations. I see APG's financial strength allowing us to make the best out of our producer checkoff dollars each year. If everybody can please reference pages 15 to 28 in your copy of the annual report uh, for more detail. We engaged MNP LLP as auditors and the audit was completed for the fiscal year end uh, July 31st, 2020. Auditors presented the audit findings to the board on October 28th and I'm pleased to report that APG received again a clean audit. The auditors supplied an, uh, supply an independent and qualified opinion based on the following stipulation that they are only able to audit the funds that APG receives from dealers through the service fee collection. This statement is clearly outlined on page 17 and in your independent auditor's report. I'd like to begin with the statement of financial position for the organization. Details are on page 19, beginning with the summary of the statement of financial position or the balance sheet for the organization as of July 31st, 2020, 
in comparison with July 31st of 2019. These are the highlights. Total assets have increased slightly, primarily due to interest gained on investments. Liabilities decreased, large, uh, due in large part to a more efficient process of direct deposit payments to vendors and efficient cutoffs at the year end. With members equity, Alberta Pulse Growers has an accumulated surplus of 494,000 as of the end of July, 2020. Of the 494,000, the five uh, APG zones have oversight of 238,000 of those dollars. Within our equity, APG is also seeing a planned decrease in capital assets, which is anticipated as there were no significant purchases. APG reserves show an increase of approximately 500,000 over last year. These reserves are contracted projects and agreements that have multiple year commitments. Alberta Pulse Growers sets aside all the funding for these agreements as it provides ass <laughs> assurance to the researchers and other partners that we contract with, uh, that we can meet our full commitment to the whole lifespan of the project or activity. Overall, assets equal, uh, sorry, assets equal liabilities plus equity, and as you can see in the slide, APG remains in a strong position to fulfill commitments to our partners moving forward. Moving on to revenue and expenditures, or the income statement as of July 31st, 2020, uh, the detail related to revenue and expenditures on page 20 of your annual report, the main revenue of the organization is service fees. In 2019 and to, to 2020, this totaled 4.42 million, and in 2018 to 19, it was 4.4 million. APG continues to collect a 0.75% of cash sales of each pulse crop. Other revenue comes primarily from project grants through the Canadian Agriculture Program, advertising revenue for Pulse Crop News and interest. Total revenue was only slightly higher than last year at 4.97 million, as seen in the comparison on this slide. On the expenditure side, Alberta Pulse Growers spent 4.5 million, down by nearly a million from last year. This can be seen specifically in the areas of market development and research and is primarily as a result of the impacts of COVID-19 and how it reduced research work and affected planned expenditures on Alberta Pulse Growers extension efforts for our key audiences of farmers, health professionals and educators. This next slide pre uh, represents the distribution across pulse crop types of service fees collected. Fees continue to be the primary source of service fees for the organization. Alberta Pulse Growers had a refund request rate of 5.8%, up slightly from last year. Are there any questions at this time from the membership on financial statements? Just uh, looking at the chat here and not seeing uh, any questions in the chat. Um, so I think this will be the end of the financial statement presentation. I encourage you to read the statements in detail in your copies of the annual report. And if you have questions, uh, please reach out to us after the meeting. I'd like to thank the members of the Audit and Finance Committee and the staff for their work on the committee and for the work of the auditors, MNP, LLP. Thank you. Okay, thank you, uh, uh, Jerome. Uh, after a couple of tough years, it's uh, it's, it's a positive uh, a positive ending, uh, and and the numbers look good this year. So, thank you. Uh, motions for the financial statement. 
The motion to accept the Alberta Pulse Growers 2019-2020 financial statements. Movers Robert Semina. The seconder is Rodney Volk. Uh, was there any questions come up yet? John, there are no questions from the audience. Okay, thank you. I'll now call for the vote. So please refresh your platform and cast your vote on the motion. Don, to let you know, the vote has passed for that motion. Okay, thank you. And next on the agenda is the appointment of the auditor for 2020-21. The motion is to appoint MNP LLP as auditors for 2020-21 fiscal year. The mover is Jerome Isaac. The sec seconder is Peter Constable. Is there any discussion, any questions about this? I'd like to uh, call for the vote now. Please refresh your platform and cast your vote on the motion. Don, that last motion has passed. Well, thank you. I guess uh, it's always the the, uh, the what you keep learning with uh, with these Zoom meetings, and uh, that's good. Our next uh, our next item on, is the executive director update. I'll now turn the meeting over to Leanne for a brief update. Thank you. Hi. So um, I'd like to just present a brief update about APG's future direction. Uh, APG adopted a new strategic plan this past year. And with that, uh, farmers will be seeing more discussion about three terms as we move forward. And those terms are grow, move, and use. Grow, move, and use will form the basis of the strategy that encompasses all the efforts of the organization. GROW is defined as work and investments involving research, environmental adaptation, grower support, extension, all in the aim to achieve our vision of a pulse on every farm. MOVE defines areas of investment and activity where we support national organizations and focus on advocacy, market access, and transportation, aiming for a solid uh, building of trade opportunities, and strong, a strong and vibrant supply chain. USE reaches out addressing increased value-added opportunities, public trust, and education efforts, and addresses the second part of our vision of pulses on every plate. These are the areas are, that form the foundation of our new strategic plan adopted on August 1st of 2020. Now I'd like to touch briefly on our budget estimates for the upcoming year. Our budget is forecast and adopted in June of each year, and it is the best estimate estimates of revenue and expenditures that we understand at that time. This year, we are forecasting a revenue of 5.14 million from service fees, and those are based on the sale of the different pulse crops we grow in the province. 
As in history, field P will continue to be our primary source of funding. And you can see that with the pie chart on your screen on the left-hand side. The forecast distribution of all other pulse crops uh, grown in the province are also identified within that pie chart. On the right-hand side of your screen, we are forecasting our expenses of 5.2 million, and they are distributed along the areas of our strategic three themes that I just spoke about, of grow, move, and use. These three categories comprise 74% of the total anticipated expenditures for the organization. This leaves APG with an anticipated net loss of 139,000, which if achieved, we will uh, expect to cover it through our savings. We're very proud and excited to begin the journey with our new strategic plan. And I'd like to thank the board, the staff and advisors for all of their input uh, as we built the plan and uh, got it ready to launch and share with you. Uh, thank you, Leanne. Uh, I'll now turn the meeting over to Allison Amateur, who will lead the discussion on item seven of the agenda, introducing the Pulse Industry Award winner for 2021. Uh, thank you, Allison. Good afternoon. It is my honor to introduce Craig Shaw. Craig has had a great impact on the growth of Alberta's pulse industry in many areas, and particularly as a champion of research and extension of pulse production knowledge and practices. He is a fourth generation Lacombe area producer who retired from farming in 2016. He was the inaugural vice president of the newly formed Alberta Pulse Growers Commission, or APG, in 1989, and became APG's president in 1990. Since planting his first pea crop in 1984 to feed his brother's hogs, his belief in pulses as an essential part of crop rotation continued to grow. Craig is well known for being an early adopter of new practices and technologies who helped grow Alberta's pulse industry by sharing his experiences with other farmers. So now we get to hear from Craig. Thank you very much, uh, Allison. Um, I'm uh, very honored uh, to receive uh, this award. Uh, I think there's many deserving uh, recipients that. Uh, worked in the startup era of Pulse Growers Association and then into uh, the commission. And uh, I can say that all of us are delighted to see the growth uh, and the development in the industry. I think it's probably moved beyond our uh, biggest expectations and uh, we take pride anytime we can drive down the road and see one beautiful pulse crop after uh, another and uh, and and so thankful that uh, some of our original goals of, of providing some uh, alternatives and some risk management uh, to our farming operations have succeeded um, it's been excellent for me because i had an opportunity to kind of think back uh, into our time frame in the 80s uh, when we we originally started and uh, <clears throat> I guess my first thought is not sure what we were thinking because we had quite a mon mon monumental task uh, ahead of us but I think it's uh, reflective uh, of the time frame that we went through uh, for any of those that have farmed in the 80s I think they know that it especially in the cropping sector it was a extremely difficult time we were uh, <clears throat> uh, fighting with uh, higher interest rates uh, which which is detrimental in terms of making investments and moving forward um, we were also into a period of crop surpluses and limited limited options uh, which made it very good for the livestock sector uh, but not very good for the cropping uh, producer 
And I think uh, we were quite dependent on some government support at that time, which is never good for our egos who always want to make our money off the marketplace and feel we're making that contribution. So I'm just going to give you a, a just a quick background of some of the things that we dealt with in those first few years, uh, because I think it's important as the history of the Post Growers uh, Commission. So um, uh, <clears throat> what were we up against? Um, we were up against uh, pretty well everything. So we had poor genetics. There hadn't been very little investment in terms of uh, the pulses. And uh, when I started, we had uh, two, two varieties to choose from, neither of which were suited for the parkland uh, uh, region. And uh, so that was a detriment. Uh, we didn't have a lot of agronomic information, although we did have some really good specialists in some different areas who were excellent at uh, bringing us up to speed. But Initially, a lot of it was trial and error and make the mistake, learn from that and move on. Um, we had poor equipment choices. Um, our seed drills and combines were better known as ways to grind uh, your pulses uh, into fragments that don't grow, don't germinate, and they don't make uh, human consumption peas at uh, the end of the day. And uh, this was just prior to um, the air seeding technology coming in, but none of the equipment in those days was designed to handle uh, gentle and handle larger seed size. Um, minimal herbicide options. Uh, we had some pre-emerge chemical, which was sort of the standard. And we had a couple of post-emerge, which were extremely harsh on the crop. And any of the growing pulses know that it's not that competitive a crop. And so that was another issue. Um, poor crop insurance. We were still back in the days uh, of uh, zone coverage versus individual coverage. And so we had to take the risks on our own because we just never had enough good yield information to uh, to build, build a better index for us. Um, surprisingly, that was in the days prior to cell phones and prior to the internet, uh, which really helps in terms of the organization. Um, and I spent many an hour on landlines and uh, over the winter, and we spent many hours traveling the breadth of the province uh, for meetings and stuff. So uh, uh, very happy to see uh, yeah, the advancements in that. Um, we had... Uh, good market potential but again we needed to develop the market and originally that market was in uh, uh, protein uh, supplements for animal feed and so uh, uh, again there was interest there but we needed to do the work to uh, to progress that market so what do we have in our favor and i think that still stands today we had a strong network of uh, good farmers uh, good support staff, uh, specialists, uh, uh, local agronomists that uh, were all willing to take on the challenge and uh, and see if we couldn't to make things better. And I think for all of those, we you have the advisor zone now. We 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 had our zone groups. Those were critical and instrumental of uh, developing the industry. I'm proud to see that that's still happening. Um, we did uh, hit some early success, interestingly enough, in the pea industry with using uh, canning and uh, fresh peas, uh, wrinkle peas uh, that came out of the southern Alberta, which had far better agronomics and far better yield potential. And uh, they ran a, st a stint of a number of years that gave us an opportunity to see the potential and they were going in the feed market. So, it didn't need to be round, it didn't need to have color, uh, those types of things. So um, the feed interest was obviously there to uh, uh, use as soybean meal replacement. And uh, that was a struggle, but uh, with the logistics and those types of things, but we gradually made progress there. Um, 
We were fortunate in terms of Europe had a fairly established industry ahead of us, and we were able to piggyback on some of their agronomics and uh, eventually into their genetics, which uh, uh, <coughs> after sending us their poor stuff to start with, eventually ended up moving their better material in. As the industry grew, we, uh, we had better uh, better opportunity to uh, integrate those into our own local areas. Um, we had uh, good uh, good growing land. Uh, we have a lot of land very well suited to pulses and all that land was virgin land at that time. So the disease issues, the soil disease issues that we deal with today were really not prevalent in the, that time frame. Um, <coughs> we, knew, we, uh, we, we saw the the value in a, a the cheap vegetable protein and whether that went to animals or humans and i think that's proven out over time that that's uh, there's been an expanding growing market for that and more potential ahead um the uh, cropping options that pulses have provided has really been a major step from where we were we were always chasing which crop could uh, make a dollar when most of them couldn't and we could destroy each of those markets in a, a short period of time and so uh, for farmers uh, more options uh, are obviously better risk management better opportunity to balance things out so um, <clears throat> i'm uh, very impressed with uh, those that have carried on since uh, we originally started um, i <clears throat> I think for all of us that were in on the ground floor, uh, it tended to be our baby at, for an extended period of time. And we were a little reluctant to, to turn those reins over to other people. But um, in uh, hindsight, we, we didn't have anything to worry about and uh, uh, very impressed with the professional organization that the Pulse Commission is today. So, so I think that's, uh, uh, that's uh, about what I had to say again, very much appreciative of the award. Uh, I haven't been involved in the pulse industry for uh, a number of years other than what happened on the farm, but uh, it was in good hands and uh, thank you very much again. Well, congratulations, Craig, uh, and thank you. Uh, it's a really well-deserved honor. Uh, I really, and all of us here, really appreciate all that you've done for our industry. And uh, I know uh, your farm used to be a uh, uh, an experimental farm in, in, in the Lacombe area. And uh, I remember going there in the drought in 2002 and uh, standing in a uh, winter wheat crop that was lodging and no one else had enough rain to have a proper lodge uh, you didn't but it was just the way uh the way you farmed and the way you tried things and uh, i think that's a, a very commendable thing and i'm really glad that we were able to pass this award on to you thank you craig as there are no resolutions uh, received at the deadline of this year's agm apg would like to now uh provide an update on activities related to last year's list of resolutions APG members adopted three resolutions last year at the AGM, and here's the update on them. Resolution 1, 2020, viable collaborative structure for primary production research with the evolution of a results-driven agriculture research organization and increased clarity in how research funding will be provided to organizations APG will, would like to report that we continue to work with research and extension organizations focusing upon mutually beneficial opportunities. Resolution number two of 2020, access for Alberta growers to new pulse genetic material developed in Saskatchewan. APG is pleased to share that we recently approved research support in partnership with Saskatchewan pulse growers and others to access new genetic material from CDC Saskatoon in the future. We look forward to working with our partners so Alberta producers can benefit from a variety of successful pulse genetics. Resolution number three, 2020, 
Alberta agriculture social media investment in 2020 with the evolution of the Government of Alberta's Champions of Agriculture group, APG feels that this will address the concerns of this resolution. The mandate of Champions of Agriculture is to regular meet, regularly meet with the Minister of Agriculture and Forestry and provide strategic advice and recommendations on emerging issues and priorities related to consumer confidence and work to debunk myths in the agriculture industry. So, uh, next is other business. So, is there anything in the chat that uh, we need to address? Uh, we are open to questions from the audience to see possible. Yeah, nothing yet. Don, we'll just give it a few minutes and then we'll see if there are any further questions before we move on. Some of the, the things that have happened in the last year is the development of RDAR and, and research. I think a lot of people were very concerned about what's happening with pulse research. Uh, we we're very pleased to learn that Lakeland College has become a partner uh, and have taken the provincial pulse program over from the uh, from A and F, uh, and we uh, we we were introduced to Josie Van Lant yesterday. Well, all of us know her, and uh, uh, we. Uh, we, we're really, it's an exciting thing to see. Uh, we, we'll see the, how things move along here in the next while. Uh, and and we'll see a, a really good uh, uh, program developed with them and, and some, some of our co collaboration. Don, we have a question. So a question from Sarah. Could you uh, provide more details about the farmer's access to CDC genetics based on the new agreement? Okay. Uh, the, what, what is happening right now is that APG and SPG are in negotiations with CDC North and basically Tom Workington. Uh, we're, we're in negotiations. So, I guess that's that's the best part is that we are talking and and there is a there is a, an agreement from the board to move ahead with uh, with some investment uh, and and as well it's just that it's still at an early time and uh, I think uh, the 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 best would be that uh, we've made contact we're working on it uh, I, as soon as we're able to make an announcement with CDC we will. And as as of, as of right now, we can't. So, but it is moving forward. Thank you. Thank you for the question, Sarah. Don, there's one more question. Just hang on, please. Uh, the question from Tom Jackson, could you explain the Lakeland Farm research and how uh, we will work to advance it with pulses? Uh, I think the, uh, right now, uh, they are in the process of signing papers also Tom unfortunately <laughs> you you have to realize that we are updated and these things are happening uh, 
we can't talk about who's going there and we can't talk about what will be picked up yet uh as of i think we were told yesterday that march 15th is when they officially take over the uh the the projects the programs that that have been uh for now have been with uh agriculture and forestry so as far as that goes uh the the it's in process too and we, we will keep you updated uh it's it it's going to be expanded considerably from our small projects and RVTs that happen at Lakeland. Uh, there'll be a lot more going on there. Uh, we, we were teasing each other the other day about NDAs, and uh, th this is this is not quite there, but it's one of those things that it's happening. And uh, as as we uh, see it develop, we'll we'll let our our members know more. So I hope that answers your question, Tom. And I think that's it for questions. Okay. All right. Let's move on to uh, recognition of outgoing members. Today, uh, APG is saying thank you to two directors who are completing their service with uh, after our AGM. Uh, Zone 2 Director Kalisha Archer shared that she was not able to continue with APG in August of this year. Felicia was in her first term with the organization. She has completed two out of three years. Felicia was active with APG on the uh, Agri-Environmental Partnership of Alberta, the Crop Sector Working Group, as well as sitting on the as the APG representative to AgSafe. Thank you, Felicia, for your service to the industry and to Zone 2. Thank you for your uh, uh, lively contri contributions to our board meetings and to our chat times. Uh, also like to thank Zone 3 Director Dan Visser, will also be moving on after the AGM, completing his three-year term representing Zone 3. Dan participated in the uh, on the APG Research Committee and most recently on the APG Audit and Finance Committee. We appreciated all the work that Dan did representing farmers from his region and providing his voice to the board discussion and decision making. You'll be really missed off the uh, Audit and Finance Committee. Thank you, Dan. Uh, we really, uh, we really thank you, uh, are appreciative of all the work that both of you have done. As we uh, are virtual, please know that there that a small token of our appreciation for your commitment to the organization will be sent to you shortly. Uh, we are excited to note that effective at the close of this meeting, APG will be welcoming welcoming two new directors to the organization: Shane Stridors from Nearlandia as a Zone Three director and Kevin Oak from Carbon Gay to Zone 2, from Zone 2. Congratulations, and we look forward to having you join the board. Allison, it's your turn. Finally, it is my privilege to recognize and thank Don Shepard, who completes his final year as chair, but is still going to remain active on the board as a director and on the executive in the role of past chair. Thank you, Don for your time leading the organization in the past two years, for your time participating in the organization in the years before. You've been a very, very engaged chair and a great leader for the organization. And we really look forward to your advice and guidance in the past chair role. And a small token will be mailed to you. I wish we could all share in uh, watching you open it, but these are COVID days, so we'll do that. Thank you again, Don. Uh, thank you, Allison, uh, and and thank you for uh, everybody very much. This has been a great experience in chairing the uh, commission. Uh, I really, uh, I think, I think it, you have to take the time to, you know, we have a really good board, a really functioning board, and that made you know, two years go by very quickly, and very easily. Uh, but being home the last ten months with COVID and not traveling and stuff is really uh brought to my attention just how much my poor wife has uh has been counted on to do chores for me and to uh to take care of the animals while i'm gone and uh uh i think uh 
you, you really don't realize the appreciation that you have to have for your, your partner when, uh, when, when there's a lot of things that need to get done and they're getting done even while you're not there. So uh, again, uh, I really want to thank the staff. I want to thank Leanne and, and all the encouragement she's been. And uh, this is, uh, uh, it, it's been a, a really great experience. So thank you all very much. And I think one of the things before we end is that this is a virtual meeting. It's, it's not the easiest thing to ask questions and to be heard from far away. But, you know, people, please look us up on our website or on our app and, and contact your board members and ask them these questions. Uh, Tom, ask, ask me again in a month's time if we can follow up a little bit more on what's going on at, at Lakeland. And, 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 and it's the same with SEED. And we'll let you guys know what's going on and, and continue to ask these questions and continue to help us develop the issues that are needed to be addressed by the pulse industry going forward. Uh, that's what Craig did over the years. And it's been an inspiration for us all. And uh, I think uh, uh, now that we've come to the end of the agenda, and I wish to thank you for joining us today. And as my last act of chair, I declare our meeting adjourned.